Hello, this is Captain Chaudhary. In my last two sessions, I talked about inertia. I talked about the precision, these being the inherent properties of the gyro. Now, in this particular session, I want to talk about the relevant properties or subsequent properties of the gyro. The axle exhibits the property of uh, change of azimuth, which is called drifting, and change of tilt, that is called tilting. In fact, in my lecture, whenever I talk about drifting, it would mean a rate of drifting or rate of change of azimuth. And whenever I talk about tilting, it would mean rate of change of tilt or rate of tilting or rate of change of altitude. In the second stage, uh, second stage of formation of gyro, which is called undamped gravity controlled gyro, I need to explain the formula for these two forces which are going to be applicable to the axle. Let's look at uh, this axle and let us add a weight over here. This is bottom heavy gravity controlled gyro. Now suppose this particular axle is on east side and this is on the west side. I told you before in my previous lecture that the axle on the east side has tendency to rise up because all the stars on the east they tend to rise in altitude. Now if this axle uh, is lifted up in the process of following the star which is tilting upwards what would happen eventually is basically it's going to tilt, tilt like this and the weight is going to go on one side like this. Actually bottom heavy uh, gyroscope acts like a stable vessel. Stable vessel means when the vessel is deflected on one side by external influence, the vessel comes, tries to come back to upright equilibrium. Similarly, this particular bottom heavy undamped gravity controlled gyro when it gets deflected on one side. This is because the axle on the east wants to follow the star which is rising up. The weight goes on one side and for acquiring the equilibrium the weight wants to come back to the initial position. This is like uh, an imaginary force that is acting from top here and from bottom here. In other words, a torque is created in vertical plane. This torque that is created in vertical plane will cause the axle to move horizontally. That means this control precision is going to act opposite to drifting. And this is going to curtail the period, time period, which was 2356.4.1. And eventually we are going to get a trace of about 84 and a half minutes. We will see how it happens, but before that, I will talk about these two formulae. Let's look at these two formulae. Assume that this is the earth over here. And I have kept a free gyroscope on top of the earth, right? Now what happens is the earth spins from west to east at the rate of 15.041 degree per hour. That means this particular axle, which is looking at the star, Right? We'll find the meridians relatively crossing the axle at the rate of 15.041. This is called change of azimuth also. This change of azimuth, the rate of change of azimuth that is drifting on the poles, can I say it is 15.041 degrees per hour? Right? Now, you see that the axle is kept at the pole. Pole means 90 degrees latitude. And we know that sin 90 is maximum, sin 0 is minimum. So can I say that drifting is directly proportional to sin of latitude? We can probably say that drifting at any other latitude is equal to 15.041 sin latitude. And please remember from our basics, we know that it is also directly proportional to cos of altitude. So this a uh, particular formula, this particular formula, we need to remember for drifting. Rate of drifting is 15.041 sine latitude cos altitude per hour. The axle actually does not go beyond a few degrees from the horizontal. That means the altitude more or less remains close to zero and cos of zero is one. So probably in 
an approximate relationship we can say that the rate of drifting is 15.041 sine latitude that means basically we may say for a given diagram that we are going to draw the rate of drifting remains constant for the latitude if you don't change the latitude rate of drifting will be constant so for a given latitude rate of drifting will depend only on the sign of latitude uh, trying to understand other formula let us draw the earth once again but this time i'm going to place the gyro on the equator looking at a distant star now if you look at this diagram then you will find that the axle is parallel to the ground parallel to the surface of earth that means tilt is zero here in about six hours time where the gyro reaches here the axle would be pointing toward the same star but you will find that the axle is now perpendicular to the surface the axle is perpendicular to the surface which means that the tilt has changed in about six hours time the tilt has changed from zero to ninety this is indeed a very high rate of change of tilt or tilting. It is, this behavior is like cosine of an angle. Uh, we are at 0 degrees latitude. And can I say that rate of tilting, I will show it like this, Tg arrow on top. Rate of tilting is directly proportional to the cos of latitude. At equator, the rate of tilting can be considered as 15.041 degrees per hour. And in general, we can say tilting is directly proportional to cos of latitude. One more thing, let us try and understand. I told you in my first lecture that the rate of tilting is upwards on the east of observer, downwards on the west of observer, and rate of tilting is zero on the meridian. This means that the rate of tilting would increase as you go away from meridian. What is that which is measured with respect to meridian? Azimuth. So can I say the rate of tilting is directly proportional to the sine of azimuth. So we can create the formula like this. Rate of tilting is 15.041 sine azimuth cos latitude. These are the two formulae I want you to remember. Rate of drifting is 15.041 sine latitude cos altitude and rate of tilting is 15.041 sine azimuth cos of latitude. Now let us look at the behavior of this gravity controlled undamped gyro. This is the meridian and this is the horizontal. Uh, this in addition to the meridian is also a tilt axis. And this one is a drift axis. This level is horizontal and this is the north meridian. Now what I will do is this gravity controlled undamped gyro, I will start its journey from here. Now as you know on the meridian the rate of tilting is zero but rate of drifting is there eastwards. That eastward drift is going to drive the axle off the meridian and as soon as the axle comes off the meridian what happens is it acquires azimuth and by the virtue of acquiring azimuth it also acquires rate of tilting. So over here I will just show the drifting but very soon at this position I must show small tilting and the constant drifting as I told you drifting is constant for the entire trace and I will show the axle move from here to here as the axle goes more and more away from the meridian what happens is rate of tilting increases more and more right and and because the tilting is upwards what happens is the axle acquires tilt tilt is measured on this particular axis uh, if you remember that diagram that I had shown you gravity control you would appreciate that more the tilt more should be the controlled precision so can I say controlled precision which is going to be created is directly proportional to the tilt and tilt is the distance from the horizontal that means when the axle acquires a particular tilt say for example 
so much tilt. This tilt is good enough to create a control precision. Control precision is in a direction opposite to the drifting. And at this point what happens is the control precision becomes equal to the rate of drifting. We need to show some control precision here also. Control precision is low here because the tilt is not enough. But at this point the tilt is good enough to create a control precision which is equal to the drifting. So here the control precision becomes equal to drifting. So when the east-west forces become equal that is a extreme limit on east-west side. So we would say that this curve that is traced this is the maximum eastward limit. I might draw a horizontal line like this and would say that this line represents a level at which the tilt is so much that the control precision is equal to drifting. In this diagram you can see that the control precision is directly proportional to the tilt. So can I say below this level control precision is less than drifting. Above this level control precision is more than drifting. This westward control precision which is opposite to drifting will bring the axle back towards the meridian and I might show an intermediate position here where control precision is uh, more than drifting and tilting of course is upwards taking the axle upwards and this particular point I must show that the tilting is maximum. Why tilting is maximum because the azimuth is maximum. So tilting maximum over here, control precision equal to rate of drifting over here. Above this control precision more than rate of drifting, tilting upwards and at this point what happens? At this point tilting is equal to zero because you have acquired a maximum tilt and you are on the meridian, rate of tilting is zero. Control precision is maximum, rate of drifting is constant for the entire trace and you will appreciate that in the similar way that you went up you would come down and complete the curve called ellipse. At this point once again the CP is equal to D but tilting is downwards. TG maximum is downwards. TG downwards. TG downwards. Drifting is constant everywhere. CP is more than drifting and below this level CP is less than the drifting. So once again I will explain the trace starting from here. The axle being in meridian and horizontal there is no tilt and there is no azimuth and that's why the only force that is applicable is the rate of drifting. Drifting will drive the axle outwards as soon as the axle is out you acquire azimuth and because of azimuth you have rate of tilting which is upwards and because of rate of tilting the axle acquires some amount of tilt and that tilt gives rise to control precision. Control precision is opposite to drifting and control precision at this level is equal to drifting. Drifting is constant throughout. Below this level control precision is less than drifting. Above this level control precision is more than drifting. Now at this point where control precision is equal to drifting and tilting upwards is maximum, tilting upwards is maximum because azimuth is maximum, at this point I can say it is the maximum eastward point. And because the control precision becomes bigger than drifting it brings the axle back to the meridian where control precision is maximum, right? Uh, that is because the tilt is maximum. Control precision is directly proportional to the tilt throughout from this point to this point control precision is more than drifting at this point control precision becomes equal to drifting that is maximum westward point and below this control precision is less than drifting this means that the axle is brought back to the same point this is called ellipse diagram the gravity control the selection of weight is such that the period of this undamped gyro is about 84 and a half minutes